What's that snapping noise? Are you guys hearing that snapping noise? Check it out, here we go. What we're gonna do here, we're gonna talk about season one of Yellowstone, we're gonna do a deep dive, we're gonna chop them up, we're gonna pull them apart. It's like your middle school anatomy class. You're Timon, I'm Pumbaa. <laughs> oh yeah! Woo! If you're watching this, this must surely be the director's cut because there's no way this makes it to the commercial release. <laughs> Hey, what's up? My name's Jefferson White. I play Jimmy on Paramount Network's hit show, Yellowstone, and this is Welcome to the Yellowstone. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna take a deeper look at each of the episodes of Yellowstone's first season. We're gonna sort of pry them open one by one. We're gonna take a, a look at some of the making of the episodes. We're gonna talk about the episodes themselves. We're gonna, we're gonna dive in and chop them up together and learn some stuff together. We're gonna have a great time. Now, Yellowstone is an immensely popular show. Hopefully most of your friends have seen it. Um, but if you happen to have any friends that haven't, we're gonna start out by doing a five minute and five minutes only recap of each episode. So Yellowstone episode 101, Daybreak, in five minutes or less, begin. I'm so confident that I'm just wasting these precious seconds to show you the timer. I don't need them. 10 extra seconds to describe a 90 minute episode of television? Who needs it? This is a major tortoise in the hare situation. I'm getting cocky. Okay, check it out. Episode 101, Daybreak. So the first character we meet in episode 101, you know it, I know it, we love him, John Dutton, played by Kevin Costner. The very first thing that happens in the show is John Dutton hauling a horse trailer is struck on the highway by a massive piece of construction equipment. So when we start the show, already John Dutton, the livestock commissioner of Montana and the owner of the largest private cattle ranch in Montana, is under attack. He's been in a car accident, and um, already we have a, a beautiful visual metaphor for progress and the old way of doing things colliding. Boom. Okay, next scene. <laughs> That's quick. Okay, already I'm panicking about the time. I should not have wasted those initial 10 seconds. Um, I am now... Um, that, that was the hare taking a nap in the tortoise and the hare analogy, and now I'm sprinting to try to catch up with the tortoise. Check it out. John Dutton has four kids, all right? The next one we meet, that's Jamie Dutton, Lawyer Dutton. He's a, he's a brilliant mind, he's a brilliant legal mind, and he protects the Yellowstone from legal threats, right? Then you've got Beth Dutton. She's sort of like a financial assassin Dutton. She works in merges and acquisitions at a firm called Schwartz and & Meyer. And we learn very quickly about her that she does not give a fuck and she's really good at what she does and she's ruthless and frightening. Um, she's ruthless and frightening. <laughs> then we meet Cowboy Dutton, that's Casey Dutton. Now, right now, Casey is estranged from his family. More on that later. And he lives on the Broken Rock Indian Reservation with his wife, Monica, and their son, Tate. So, Casey is an ex-Navy SEAL. He's a cowboy, he's a badass, and he, uh, he lives off the ranch. He lives, uh, he lives on the Indian Reservation right now. And then we've got uh, the fourth Dutton child, that's Lee Dutton who is the sort of natural heir to the throne. He works on the Yellowstone with his dad. He's a, he's a livestock officer, a livestock law enforcement officer as well. Um, Lee Dutton is the fourth Dutton. Okay. This is, it's a parade of characters in this first episode who will become very important over the course of the next 10 to 15 seasons. Um, so it's important that we, we check in on all of them right at the beginning here. And so then we travel to the Broken Rock Indian Reservation, where we've got the new chief, Thomas Rainwater. So Thomas Rainwater is uh, the new chief of the Broken Rock Indian Reservation, and he sort of has a, a progressive mindset in terms of how he wants to expand the territory of the Broken Rock Indian Reservation and how he wants to sort of aggressively approach advocating for his tribe. Um, and so he's a slightly controversial figure. He's a slightly unorthodox figure. Um, and he's one of the three sort of major patriarchs that we'll be following in season one of Yellowstone. So, so far we've met John Dutton, now we've met Thomas Rainwater, and then the third sort of big heavy hitting patriarch in season one of Yellowstone, that's Dan Jenkins. So Dan Jenkins is a land developer. He's a brilliant, um, 
aggressive legal mind and sort of financial mind. And uh, his plan is to build a massive new land development abutting the Yellowstone Ranch. So things aren't going to go great between him and Kevin Costner. Spoiler alert. Um, So that's our three sort of big, powerful, central power players um, that we're introduced to in Yellowstone episode 101. How are we doing? Oh, God, there's 54 seconds left. We haven't even begun to talk about the conflict yet, necessarily. I'm going to give myself a bonus five minutes on this one because this episode is 90 minutes long, and that's it's utterly psychotic to imagine that you could summarize it in five minutes. Who would even set out to do that? An egomaniac, surely. So tell you what, I'm going to give myself another five minutes. Here we go. Episode 101. So basically, the the primary conflict of episode 101 that will come to sort of spill throughout the rest of the season is these cows have wandered off of the Yellowstone Ranch and onto the Broken Rock Indian Reservation. And Thomas Rainwater, the sort of non-traditional, unconventional, aggressive chief that we mentioned before, he's decided to hold those cows on his side of that land, right? So immediately from the very beginning, John Dutton and Thomas Rainwater in conflict. John Dutton needs to get those cows back. He's the livestock commissioner of Montana. They're very important to his constituency and also like his friends and also like himself. Like this cattle represents a ton of money. It's a ton of resources. And so for the, for the, um, Indian Reservation to be sort of holding them is is almost an act of theft. That's how John Dutton would see it. Obviously, Rainwater doesn't see it the same way. And there's also a little bit of a Romeo and Juliet situation going on because uh, Dutton's youngest son, Casey, is married to Monica, who um, lives on the Indian Reservation. They both do, right? So Casey and Monica are a little bit of a Romeo and Juliet who are a relationship that's sort of trying to stay together despite being pulled apart by the uh, the larger forces at play. Okay, we're still in 101. You stick with me here. Okay, check it out. Um, John Dutton's trying to figure out how he's going to get these cows back. And he's sort of going through all these different maneuverings. He's going through these political maneuverings. He's also sort of sending his son Lee, uh, the, the livestock officer, to have a sort of more legal conversation with, uh, with tribal police on the other side of the... Uh, the boundary line, there's a sort of conflict that's brewing about these cows over the course of the episode. Also, at the same time, you've got uh, a very important element at play here. John Dutton is approached by Dirk Herdstrom, a friend of his from the past, who wants to call in a favor. And he says to John Dutton, hey, buddy, do me a favor. You got to take my grandson and straighten him out. John Dutton says, I'm not going to fucking do it, buddy. Dirk Herdstrom says, come on, please. And John Dutton knows, okay, I'm going to do it but I'm going to do it my way. And Dirk Hurstum's like, hell yeah, do it. So John Dutton sends his biggest, toughest, meanest cowboy, Rip Wheeler. Remember that name. That's going to be relevant for 15 seasons. Um, Rip Wheeler to grab Jimmy Hurstum, Dirk Hurstum's uh, grandson, Jimmy Hurstum. Remember that name. That's going to be relevant for hopefully a while. We can only hope. Uh, six seasons, seven seasons? Cross your fingers, folks. Um, To bring him onto the ranch and sort of straighten him out. So this kid's a fuck up. He's an idiot. He's an asshole. He had the arrogance to try and summarize a 90-minute episode of television in five minutes. Who does that? Uh, He grabs him, brings him onto the ranch. He's going to straighten him out, fix him up. Okay, so throughout this episode, this conflict has been brewing. There's these cows. Are they going to get him back? How are they going to get him back? What's going on? And then at about the 60-minute mark, that conflict erupts into violence. So John Dutton sends his son Lee and livestock officers to go and bring these cows back from the reservation. Tribal police are there and violence erupts. And as part of this violence erupting, Lee Dutton, John's oldest son, the natural heir to the throne, is shot and killed by Robert Long, Monica's brother, and thus Casey's brother-in-law. Right? So, all of a sudden, Casey, his brother is killed by his brother-in-law. He's there, and in an act of revenge, kills his own brother-in-law, his wife's brother. So, violence erupts and strikes both sides, and tragedy strikes both sides of this conflict. Um, And we'll be dealing with that, that tragedy 
that trauma for most of season one. Um, John Dutton is bereaved. He's aggrieved. He's upset. His oldest son has been killed. Um, sort of a... He, he, was, he, was a, he was a conflict about cows. It was about money. And then his oldest son is killed, and it's about so much more than that. Um, it's a huge, profound loss for the family. Um, I've got one minute left, so I can't spend much more time talking about how sad it is that Lee dies. It's very sad. And Casey's there, basically, watches his brother die. This is also like a formative tragedy for Casey. There's a, a service, a funeral for Lee Dutton. Lee Dutton is buried. Um, Beth, the sort of financial wizard slash assassin slash all around badass, comes home for the funeral. And she asks her father, you know, just tell me who to fight. And John Dutton iconically says, everyone. Because in this first episode, we've set up this conflict, this sort of multifaceted war on all fronts between the Yellowstone Ranch, this massive private cattle ranch, and the Broken Rock Indian Reservation, and Dan Jenkins and the land developers, and the government of Montana. It's sort of a, a multifaceted uh, war on all fronts between uh, John Dutton and his kids and everyone else. Yellowstone, episode 101, Daybreak. There's so much we missed. Beth and Rip, they're a couple, kind of. It's contentious at this point. Fingers crossed that works out okay for both of them. Um, some other important details we missed. Uh, Casey gives John Dutton this stallion that he breaks as part of his job as a freelance cowboy. He's a freelancer. Love that. Respect that. Um, big ups to the freelance community. Um, he gives John Dutton this stallion who he, he breaks. It's very difficult. And he gives it to John Dutton. And this horse is like, this is a problem horse who will continue to be a problem horse for a while still. Other important details. God, there's whole storylines we didn't get to. 10 minutes wasn't enough. The episode is 90 minutes long, and I have a tendency to spend five minutes talking about every minute of it. Um, but let's just break it down real quick. We're gonna run through some important stuff. So I'm gonna say the episode MVP, episode MVP, episode 101, Daybreak. That's John Dutton. Of course it's John Dutton. It's Kevin Costner. He's the patriarch of this ranch. He's the MVP, incredible actor. He, he, he goes on such an insane journey over the course of 90 minutes. Um, my grandma's favorite line of the episode, um, Jimmy says, what the fuck, man? My grandma loves it. Uh, my grandma loves swearing. She's always texting me and saying, hey, Jeff, could they swear more on the show? Um, could, you, could you make it more profane? So she appreciates it every time we sneak that in. So my grandma's favorite line of the show, what the fuck, man? Um, an Easter egg. So this is a, a favorite thing of mine is, is tracking Jake Ream's journey throughout the show. In the very first episode, episode 101, there's a cattle auction. It's where Dirk Herdstrom approaches John Dutton. And it's also where Governor Perry, who I had completely skipped in this 10-minute recap, which is insane because that's a pivotal character, where we first sort of start to realize that Mary, maybe Governor Perry and John Dutton have a relationship. Cattle auction. Um, at this cattle auction, you see two cowboys. One of them is Jake Ream. The other one is Sled Reynolds, who's our animal wrangler for the show. He's the head animal wrangler. And he's just out there on the show. It's amazing. He's uh, he's like one of the best animal wranglers in the biz, and he's one of the guys who taught me how to ride a horse, along with Jake Green. If you look at every frame of Yellowstone, chances are somebody in that frame has helped teach me how to ride a horse. Um, my favorite guest stars of this episode, you got Gabe Kasdorf playing the engineer who advises John Dutton on how to move a river. They move a river. There's a river that gets moved. I know that seems, how could you miss that? That's such a big plot point. It's a long episode. There's a lot going on. I didn't have that much time, okay? My other favorite guest star of um, episode Yellow one, uh, Yellowstone episode 101 is uh, Sam Yellowbird, played by Takala Black Elk. He's sort of an amazing actor who a, plays a friend of uh, Casey and Monica's on the Broken Rock Indian Reservation. So that's two favorite guest stars. Um, and then I figure maybe every episode we'll check in on how Jimmy's doing physically. In this first episode, Jimmy gets um, tased and then branded and then kicked. He gets kicked in the butt. <laughs> Jimmy's been kicked in the butt. Amazing. That's episode 101. That's all of it. Jimmy gets kicked in the butt. Real quick, it's a violent show. 
people die, characters die. Episode 101, you got your big ones. You got Lee Dutton. You got Robert Long. That's the sort of um, Mercutio and Tybalt of this epic saga. But never forget Jimmy's tarantula, who presumably starved to death when Jimmy was ripped from his peaceful life. Ripped! <laughs> hey, look at that. This is the pun camera. Normal camera, pun camera. Normal camera, pun camera. Um, but that tarantula in real life is fine. And so is Dave Annabelle, and so is the actor that played Robert Long. They're all fine. Okay, so we put a we put a voicemail inbox up on Instagram, a number you can call and leave a voicemail. I haven't heard any of these, but I'm very excited to. Uh, let's hear one. My name is Jaden Stuckey, and my favorite part is when Rip tells you to shut the fuck up. Thank you. Bye. Dang. Dang. I want you guys to know that um, I had never heard these before, and the producers queued them up. The producers are the ones who, like, lined up these voicemails for me to listen to. So that means that out of all of the voicemails, the one that they wanted me to hear now was that one. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. You know? Great. Let's listen to another one. Hi, Jimmy. This is Nanny. I want you to know you are my favorite person on the whole show. You've been from day one. Now, I don't know what your love life is like. You know, I've got, if you've got it going, if you're in the dumps, whatever. But I just want you to know, regardless, I want you to know that any time you want to put your boots under my son, my crap. My bed is fine with me. I screwed this up royally. No, you didn't, Nanny. That's so kind. I, we've got, so we've got another. There's two from Nanny here. We'll listen to the second one now. Hi, Jimmy. This is Nanny. Hey, guys. Take two. I've watched you since this program began. I love you. In fact, you've always been my favorite. That wasn't the mistake. I don't know what your love life is like, really. Uh, whether you're really going strong here or whether you're in between girls, but... I want you to know that, honey, you can park your boots under my bed any time you want to. Bye-bye. Thanks, Nanny. Wow. I, I was really harsh on the producers a second ago because they chose to have the first thing I heard be, shut the fuck up, Jimmy. Um, <laughs> but I will give them credit because the second thing that they had me hear was so kind. <laughs> wow. I feel lifted. I feel buoyed. Um, maybe I'll be okay after all. Thanks, Nanny. That means a lot. Uh, you guys should also know that the, the, the very Nanny, that's one of our producer's grandmothers. So it was really, really sweet of her to call and say that. She was not asked to do that. She was not asked to do that. Here's the question for you. Um, how did she know that I desperately needed that affirmation? I have no idea. She cannot be left to her own devices. What does your mom think about me? You're also my mom's favorite character. I'm pretty sure yes, there will be a voicemail later. Oh, amazing. For her. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, let's let's fucking get some quotes off Instagram. Let's to say this the way my grandma would want me to say it, let's fucking get some goddamn quotes off <laughs> motherfucking Instagram, you shitbags. My grandma likes it when we swear on the show. She's badass. Your grandmother should meet my grandmother. They should hang out. They agree that I'm good. <laughs> Our grandmothers can agree about that. Then, then, then that one guy disagreed strongly. Jaden Suki disagreed strongly. What's up with that, man? All right. Prism Child wants to know, how much time do you spend on set per day? How much time do I spend on set per day? Actors, we're very lucky in this regard. There's a crew, a massive crew, hundreds of people that probably spend like depending on labor laws, like uh, 12 to 14 hours on set a day. Actors come in, we do our scenes, and then we leave. We spend uh, anywhere from, I mean, like if you're just in one scene for the day, you might just be there for four or five hours. You might come in, do your scene, and leave. Or if you're in every scene for a day, or if it's a particularly long or complicated scene, like in episode uh, 101 of Yellowstone, um, the, that those big fight scenes, those sort of big complicated uh, sequences, those could take all day. So that could be a 12 to 14 hour day. 
Um, it's funny. It often depends on something that I never thought about until I was on a television set is if your scene takes place in the daytime, you can really only shoot that during the daytime. You can fake it a little bit. You can like put some gigantic lights up and pretend they're the sun. But for the most part, if your scene takes place during the day, you can shoot it during the day. And if it takes place at night, you got to shoot it during the night. So for the most part, days are 12 to 14 hours long and they're either like daytime or nighttime. Or we do sometimes these things called split days, which is like the latter half of the daytime. And then we shoot some night scenes when it comes night. All right, um, Much Need of Coffee wants to know, did you know how to ride a horse before filming? Uh, before the filming of Yellowstone season one, I had never ridden a horse in my life. Um, and I, before we started shooting, um, the show the show takes riding and cowboying and this this lifestyle very seriously and respects it a lot. So we spent a lot of time training and learning uh, before we started shooting episode uh, 101. And then a lot of the people that taught me how to ride a horse are in the show. So Jake Ream is an amazing real-life cowboy who appears in the show and also taught me how to ride a horse. Tom Ferran is a, is a horse trainer and uh, an incredible rider and horseman. He, he spent a lot of time with me, <laughs> very patiently teaching me how to ride. Uh, Taylor showed me a bunch of stuff. It's amazing. I sort of had the least experience on set riding horses which is also a gift because it meant that I could learn from everyone. And I was sort of surrounded by, by very talented riders who, uh, who got me caught up to the best of their ability. I'm lucky because Jimmy doesn't need to be that good a rider. Jimmy is just kind of learning how to ride. Um, so I have that excuse. All right. Uh, Jack Creek Creations um, wants to know what got you into photography. Wow. Um, honestly, working on Yellowstone got me into photography. I took like one picture of 4 J. Smith with some mountains behind him, and it looked really good. And I was like, oh, I'm good at this. And then it turned out that 4 J. Smith and mountains are hard to photograph poorly. Um, so since then, it's been a big learning curve. It's a little bit like I like, you know, I, I played Need for Speed Underground and got convinced that I was a really good um, drag racer, which I'm not. I don't own a car. I live in New York City. Um, the point I'm trying to make here is that shooting behind the scenes photography on Yellowstone got, got me involved in photography because a lot of the crew members uh, shoot on film and it became a really fun way for me to sort of make friends in the crew and like stay active in between takes and uh, connect a little more with uh, some other members of the cast. So yeah, Yellowstone introduced me to, to photography and, and analog photography specifically. Our last one for the day um, Cheryl Taylor asks, what's your favorite color? What's my favorite color? Green. Green. Why green? Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's, it, it's a little bit like an instinctual answer, like green. Um, and you have to just kind of, you know, why like anything? You know what I mean? Why do any of us, why are we drawn to anything? I love green because there's like so many shades of green and there's so many naturally occurring shades of green. Like green appears, there's green all around us. And I think living in New York, um, green becomes this precious thing. Like we're surrounded by so much concrete and so many tall buildings that trees and grass become this really beautiful, scarce, precious um, commodity. Also frogs are my favorite animal and frogs are largely green. Not all of them. There's also frogs that are totally different colors. It's pretty cool. Google frogs. You'll see what I'm talking about. You guys know about frogs? Guys, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for tuning in for the first episode of Welcome to the Yellowstone. Uh, I feel so, so lucky and so grateful to, to be on a show that has this level of fan engagement and has this level of fan participation. We're so grateful for your comments, your messages, uh, your questions. It really means the world to us, so thank you so much. And if you liked what you've seen here, or listened to here, if you're listening exclusively, uh, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can subscribe to Paramount Network on YouTube. TikTok, is there a TikTok? There's no TikTok. Let's make a TikTok right now. This is me doing that thing that TikTok teens do where they're pointing to the things. It says, follow us on Facebook, follow us on... So you guys are going to have to in post just add all those in. That's for the editing team. This is, this is how TikTok works. 
You guys know about TikTok? <laughs> wow, shit. Holy cow. They, they told me to wrap it up, and this is what I did. I started a whole new bit that I will refuse to stop. Hey, if you enjoyed this and you want to watch more, you can subscribe to us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Paramount Network on YouTube. There's tons more stuff. You go to ParamountNetwork.com. There's tons of behind the scenes videos. You buy those DVDs. You can message me directly on Instagram. I'm at underscore Jefferson White. The guy who has the real at Jefferson White handle will not give it to me. He won't let me have it, for real. At underscore Jefferson White, that's the real one. Um, check it out. Thank you. Welcome to the Yellowstone.